So this M4 from ExtraFi is one that's been on my radar for a while now. It's lightweight, it's an ergo shape, it's got circles instead of hexagons. After having it in hand, I can tell you it's a remarkably well-engineered mouse with lots of little details that set it apart from the crowd. There's a lot to dig into here. You ready? Let's go! This video is brought to you by Bookmark.com. Bookmark's a free website builder where you can create a professional looking website with hosting in just a couple minutes by answering seven simple questions. Bookmark's AI engine Ada literally builds your website right in front of your face in less than two minutes and you can edit virtually every aspect of the page once it's complete. You can also upgrade to connect your existing domain and create an online store with e-commerce integration. It's awesome. Click the link in the description below or check them out at Bookmark.com. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at the M4 Lightweight Ergonomic Gaming Mouse from ExtraFi. For transparency, they did send this out for review, but as you should know by now, come on. Retailing at 59 USD and Euros for the all black version and 65 for the other four colored variants, this is a lightweight medium ergo design that's actually got a pretty unique shape. These are available in some pretty great colorways. In house today, we have the blue and black and the retro edition, which shares the same colorway as the OG NES console. This is high level nerd shit and I'm here for it. Also available, the all black, all white, and the pink and black. For measurements, we've got 120 millimeters long, 56 millimeters wide at the front flare, 68 at the rear, and 60 at the grip. Height is 39 at the peak, and only 23 millimeters measured from the desk to the scroll wheel. The front triggers are really low, like a ZA series, and I like that. It's extremely comfortable in palm. The best way I can say it here is that they're not using Ergo as a marketing bullet point. They're not using it as a general description of the shape. It's obvious that a lot of thought actually went into the ergonomics of this mouse so much so that they're trying to patent this shape thoughtful is a good word for this mouse that's going to kind of be a running theme throughout this review today because while there are some opportunities with this it's really obvious that a lot of time and care went into the design of this mouse this was not like a rush to market job i also have to point out that they include two backlit abs keycaps in here as well to tie in with your setup one with the extra fly logo to match the mouse color and the other that says gg gg yourself there boys nice touch quoted weight here and the weight on my scale is 69 grams and like other lightweights it accomplishes this with a skeletal shell circles this time they're actually really smooth and comfortable and they do help slightly with grip one of the things i noticed first about this mouse was the overall thickness of the side panels they're thick overall it looks sturdy and the tolerances where the pieces meet are great surface here is matte and it's uv coated there's very very minimal flex but there is some creak Front triggers have Omron 20 mil switches and they are split from the body. Side play on mouse one, if you hold this mouse up and try to move it, there's a lot of motion. In actual use, if you click straight down or down and in, it's very solid. If you click and push to the outside, it's gonna drift. Mouse two is really solid and barely has any side play at all. This mouse has some of the best pre and post travel I've seen on triggers, period. Clicks are super crispy, they feel great. I should point out here that both my copies have the same creak on the frame and the same motion on mouse one, so it seems consistent, but this is a pretty small sample size. Also worth noting, these are pretty early samples. They did arrive in full sealed retail packaging, but I can't say with 100% certainty that these are final retail. Side button switches here at Juano. Buttons have a great size, shape, and position, but they do suffer some pre-travel. It feels more pronounced on the retro version because the resistance on that one feels a touch stiffer. Not sure why. I like the feel on the blue copy, but the retro copy, it's not fair to call it mushy, like floaty maybe? We'll just say that it has noticeable pre-travel, not only during detail testing, but during regular use as well. The scroll wheel though is outstanding. Quietest, smoothest scroll I've seen in a while. It's not like a clicky notch tactile, it's smooth, with resistance like you're kind of dragging it through syrup. It's 24 steps, I really like it. If you ask me to design a perfect scroll, this is what it feels like. The wheel coating is like a gummy rubber with like a tire tread print with RGB running right down the middle. It's stiff to actuate too. That's a Juano switch in there as well.
The thing that looks like a DPI button right behind the scroll is almost flat to the shell and it doesn't control DPI, it controls the RGB. RGB is interesting here as it runs along the side buttons and around the front side under the front triggers. The extra fi logo is also floating off the PCB inside the mouse and you can view it through the holes. Big aesthetic points for this one, great touch. All the control for the RGB takes place on the mouse itself, so there isn't multi-zone control. You get a few modes, a few colors, and brightness controls that allow you to deactivate it completely. You can't see where the LEDs are located because they're actually on the PCB shining up onto the translucent strip, so it looks nice and diffused. Sensor on deck here is a 3389 and it has eight different steps available by default. I love it when 1200 DPI is a default step and we've got that here. Extra Fi logo on the top and GLA HF on the bottom and micro printing, like it. DPI button is marked as CPI, same thing, and it's recessed from the bottom plate. Nice indicator LED here as well. Polling rate is adjustable as well via this physical switch on the bottom. One thing I'm not finding on this mouse is lift off distance adjustment. There is an old command to adjust this that looks like it's still active in the firmware, but while it flashes the LEDs, I don't see it or feel it actually adjusting anything, so maybe in a future firmware. That said, there is currently no software available for this mouse, and based on the fact that they've released several mice already with no software i wouldn't be holding out for any either glides here 100 percent ptfe with rounded edges they're thick too they look like they should hold up well they actually look and feel very close to hyperglides you do get an extra set on the box as well as an additional glide that goes around the sensor ring if you want in terms of glide on the novel keys pad these felt slightly slower than both the teflon feet and the g wolves and the hyperglides on my s1 though i gotta say those hyperglides are pretty broken by now this mouse was very noisy on the helios and a touch too fast for me on the thor my favorite match here was the Zowie GSR SE has a better glide on that pad than the Zowie stock feet. Rounding out internal specs, the PCB inside the mouse is sealed and we have an ARM32 processor on board here as well. The cable is 1.8 meters and what they call the easy cord. It's their take on a stock paracord solution. There's no angle on the stress relief here, which struck me as odd. Also odd, the weave on the blue copy felt a little looser than on the retro. Because of this, the blue one actually felt a little more flexible. This isn't as good as some others we've seen lately, G Wolves, Cooler Master MM710, but it's on par with like Final Mouse. A bungee is still a good option here in my opinion. No issues with plug fitment like we saw in the G Wolves. It slides in like they're old friends. One thing I like too is that the cable is color matched to the body, so you might not even feel the need to paracord this thing, even for aesthetic reasons. Now, size wise, this feels closest to an EC2. Less of a pronounced hump though. I don't know how much sense it makes to compare the size to Ambi Mice, but just to give you an idea for hand size, it's in the neighborhood of a G Pro Wireless, an S2, but obviously a much wider grip width, a little larger larger than an O minus, but much taller, much wider grip width. For performance, no issue with the implementation of the 3389 at all. It took me about 10 minutes to warm up with it and I was able to beat my one wall six target TE score again and then again. I have been training a lot though, in between reviews, so obviously that's what I want to see. The small overall shape here versus the skull allows me to fingertip this mouse more effectively. I know that sounds weird to fingertip an ergo, but here again, that wider outside flare gives me a really comfortable grip, and as a bonus, with this mouse, I can actually still use the side buttons like this. In-game, tracking is still an opportunity for me, but my flicks felt really good. Even without map knowledge and a few key changes to mechanics, I didn't have any problems doing work in the Modern Warfare beta, mostly thanks to all those console players out there. Thanks, guys. Closing out here, this mouse is not Extra Fi's first rodeo, and that's pretty apparent. Design elements here are very strong. I'm sure some people are gonna wanna see LOD adjust. Hopefully, that's something we see in the firmware revision. It's not perfect. The play on mouse one is gonna be a turnoff for a lot of people, and I'm sure that frame creak is gonna deter some people as well, though it shouldn't. Outside of that, this mouse feels really solid. And those side buttons as well, I think they could have dialed these in a bit more without risking actuation from a flexing side panel. The side panel flex here is really minimal. Cable here is certainly passable, but it's not my favorite of the stock paracords that we've seen. And after having this mouse apart, I can tell you that paracording this mouse would be uniquely challenging as that cable actually passes through the PCB. I love the size for an ergo, love the shape. It does feel unique, I'm a big fan. I like the feet, I like the weight, I like the little details in the extras. The design language here is really unique and quirky. I really like the fact that Swedish companies don't seem to be afraid to impart some personality into their products. If the skull feels too big or you're just frustrated by Zowie's seemingly outright refusal to innovate during a time when we're seeing a lot of innovation, 
This is an easy recommend. It feels really quality in hand. It's comfortable, it's accurate, it's consistent. With just a few slight revisions, this really could be the perfect medium-sized Ergo. Pre-orders are already open, full release coming sometime in October. This is one to keep an eye on. I'll put what links I do have in the description. As always, any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.